Okay, we're in the midship stateroom, middle of the boat. And we've got water here in the bilge, and then that white thing is a combination bilge pump and internal float switch. Look at the knob on the left-hand side of it. See that mm -hmm. knob right yep. there? Grab the knob and twist it. The other way. Okay, so you've actually manually lifted the float switch, and you've got the bilge pump to energize and come on. The problem that we're now having is the bilge pump is too high to yep. suck out that water. That water looks like it's two knuckles deep. Go ahead and test and see how deep it is. Yep. Two knuckles deep. Two knuckles deep. So, this water, go ahead and slosh it around with your hand. Yeah, yeah you can see all the funk in there. Yep. So that's, that's going to make a mess. It's going to mold and mildew and then it's going to make a stink. Yep. So to get the water out of here, I would get the smallest, cheapest plastic manual bilge pump for a dinghy and pump it out into a five gallon bucket. Okay. So now this bilge pump is not pumping all that water out because we're sitting level at the dock. Ah, uh, I gotcha. But if you start moving the boat and the bow rises up, then the water will rush back here the water will lift the float switch and then it will pump out some of it but that bilge pump is sitting about an inch higher than the bottom of the, mm -hmm. the water so that's why and is that normal to have it sit an inch high not in my mind it's not yeah, okay so the boat builder just in my mind didn't do it as good as he could have done it yep go ahead and test that uh, knob again and run it and see if it'll pump any water out So we're getting some water out. Yep. And then it's back feeding, so we're not really getting that much out. No. Nope. So the best way to solve this problem is to get the cheapest, smallest plastic hand pump yep. and pump it into a five gallon bucket and carry it out. Yep. Now if this water is not polluted in the sense of antifreeze or motor oil or diesel fuel, it's just stagnant. Because it from, hasn't been driven, moved really. And that's huh? dust. That's uh. dust that got wet, and that's what it is. And then we still have that cardboard box right there. Yep. I'll so we'll take that. care of that and get that out. Yep. So then I can just, we can empty that out, and I can just clean that out with a rag. Yeah, just clean stuff. it out with a, a paper towel yep. and just get rid of everything. Nope. Good. Now, if that's that's a grocery bag, remember there's holes in the bottom corners of the grocery bag, so you don't want it to drip on the carpet. Got it. Okay, doke. So we got that fixed. Also, looking at your smoke alarm up there. Uh huh. Remember, you got to change the batteries every we just six months. About that this yeah. morning. And if that's got a CO built into it. They're separate, I think, over there, behind you, Schlip. Up. Yeah, up here. Okay, so if it's got a CO, yeah. there you go, that's carbon monoxide. Yeah. Got to check the dates on those because they've got an average life of seven years. So you may have to replace that also.